today's recipe, we're making a classic tuna casserole. Now, this is a nice comfort food. It's creamy, it's cheesy, it's decadent, it's, it's just delicious. But if you know me, I like to put a healthy twist on things. So I'm gonna change it up a little bit, and today we're gonna make it gluten-free. For all my gluten-free friends out there, you have gotta try this, it is delicious. If you don't care about gluten-free, you're not gonna notice. And if you do care, you can also make it, or you don't have gluten-free you know, ingredients, you can make this just regular, right? You can use your noodles, whatever noodles you want. I've got breadcrumbs in here and flour. So those can all be substitute in and out. That's what's great about this recipe. You can make this to whatever your food preferences are. The other thing I wanna mention is there is no canned soup in this recipe. We're making everything from scratch and it's not difficult. It's actually quite simple and easy to do. So I'm Rockin' Robin and I'm gonna show you all the details and how to do it right after this. So before we get started, I wanna start off with our little chef joke story today. All right, so here's two tuna fish and they're swimming along in the ocean and they come upon and they see a submarine. So the big mama tuna says to the little one, well, don't be scared, little tuna. That's just a canned human. <laughs> All right, let's get into our recipe. Okay, so for our ingredients, we're gonna start off with our pasta. So I'm using bonza pasta, which is a chickpea pasta. It's a great uh, gluten-free alternative. You can use any pasta you like. This one happens to have you know, some really good protein, more protein than regular pasta, uh, some good fiber, and it is a little bit lower in carbs. For my tuna, I'm using skipjack tuna, and I'm using skipjack in particular because it is lower in mercury as opposed to using albacore, which is a bigger fish, and it tends to have more mercury. We'll need some sharp cheddar cheese that's grated. We'll need some frozen peas as well. I've got some super fine dice here on a yellow onion, some celery, and this is my super fine dice on mushrooms. Now, I do that in particular because uh, my family doesn't like the big pieces. So if you like big pieces of mushrooms, go ahead and leave, you know, slice them up and just leave them big. But I like to do it small. And this is my flavor base. This is going to really help this dish come alive with these flavors because we're going to be sauteing this in some olive oil. We'll need some chicken broth. I'm using 2% milk here. This is regular cow's milk. Again, you can substitute lots of different milks here. Almond milk would work and so would coconut milk. I, I think I would probably tend to go with coconut milk if you wanted a different alternative just because of the fat content. It makes it a little bit richer and you know more decadent. We'll need some flour. Again, I'm using Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking flour. You can use regular flour here if you'd like. I've got some fresh, and I like to use fresh herbs. So this is fresh thyme. I got it out of my garden. You just wanna peel those little leaves off and chop it up nice and fine. I'm using some Sauvignon Blanc. You can use any white wine you want, and this is optional as well. It's just a flavor enhancer. Uh, you can you know, leave it out if you want. We're just adding a little bit, and it will cook off the alcohol. To season it up, we're gonna use some garlic powder, some salt and pepper. And then to finish this dish off, we're gonna put a little topping on it with, made with breadcrumbs. Now here I'm using Aaliyah's gluten-free breadcrumbs, which work beautifully. They're seasoned with uh, some Italian seasoning. Gonna add some Parmesan cheese to that and some butter. I'm gonna combine that and sprinkle it on top. It is wonderful. So we'll need some olive oil and I'm using an avocado spray for my pan so it doesn't stick. And we'll need a little bit of butter. I've got my pot of water here starting to boil with the lid to cook my pasta according to the package directions, which will take about nine minutes after it starts to boil. So we got that going. And then in my big frying pan here, we're gonna start cooking up our onions and our celery and our mushrooms. So I'm gonna place some olive oil into the pan, probably a tablespoon. Place our onions in there, the celery and the mushrooms. And we're gonna saute this for 10 minutes. Now while our onions are cooking over here, I'm gonna prep up our pan here. I'm just gonna spray it with a little bit of avocado spray, just a, a light coating. That'll keep it from sticking. I'm also gonna season this up just a little bit. Just gonna put a little bit of salt in there and just a little bit of garlic powder and some cracked pepper. So I've got this over medium heat right now and I am gonna lower the temperature as it gets really cooking because I don't want it to burn. Our pasta water is boiling. I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of salt and then we'll toss in the pasta and cook that for nine minutes. And the idea is to get this all timed out so that, you know, everything comes together at the same time. It's been 10 minutes now. 
So we're ready to add some more ingredients to our pan. Next I'm going to add the thyme. So I'm going to add the flour to my chicken broth while it's cold, and that way it won't lump up. Now it's time to add the wine to the pan and let that cook. And now I'm going to add the chicken broth with the flour to this. And then we add the milk. Depending on how thick your sauce gets, you can always add a little more chicken broth to it if it's too thick. Now at this point I am going to add a little more garlic powder to this. Another pinch of salt. And a few cracks of pepper. So as this starts to get hot, you can see it's starting to thicken up. Alright, so I've got my skipjack tuna here, and I've drained it. And so I'm going to, with clean hands of course, I'm going to use my hands to break it up because I don't want big chunks. I want lots of little pieces everywhere. Drain out our pasta and it'll be ready to add. Time to add the cheese to this. And you can see that the cheese just melts right in. Time to add the pasta. Give that a stir. And I'm going to add the peas. Now essentially this is done. We could put it together in our dish. You could even freeze it at this point and then use it at a later date. And then you know you would take it out, thaw it out in your in your refrigerator. You would want to add your crust after the fact though. You wouldn't want to freeze that. It just turns out better if you just you know, add it at the end when you're ready to make it. So now we'll just pour it right into our prepared baking dish. Next we'll combine our breadcrumbs with the Parmesan cheese and then add some melted butter to it, stir it up till it's the uh, sand-like consistency, and then we'll sprinkle it on top of our casserole. Okay, this is going in the oven, 375, for about 15 to 20 minutes. While our casserole is cooking in the oven, it's time for some giggles. No, I didn't forget our chef joke number two. Here you go. Why did the squirrel bury the tuna? Because if you spell it backwards, it's a nut. <laughs> Here's our casserole. After 20 minutes, you can see, you want to see that bubbling going on around the, the perimeter there. And I'd like to see a little browning here. I got a little bit going on here. You can speed that up. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my oven on broil for just a couple minutes and let that brown up just a little bit on top. Our casserole has been cooling now for, you want to let it set up for about 10 minutes or so because it's really hot, especially in the baking dish that I'm using. Uh, it really retains heat. So let it set up a little bit and it'll be easier to serve. Ah, this is so creamy and flavorful. All right, let's do a taste test, get a little bit of that crust on top. This recipe is a winner. You've got to try it. It's savory. It's not, you know, too cheesy, but it's got a little cheese in there, and the crust on top gives it a little variation, a little crunch. Man, this is delicious, guys. It's a definite comfort food. If you like tuna recipes and you'd like to try another one, I've got a really good one for you. It's my tuna melt. Have you tried that? I'm going to leave a link for you right here. Click that. Go check it out and make it. You are going to love it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button for me and leave me a comment. All right, we'll see you next week.